Konnichiwa. Welcome to Nonbiri Sensei's channel. Today, what I want to talk to you guys about is where do we start learning Japanese? What is Japanese? So mainly, Japanese are described in hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Hiragana, katakana, kanji. So what are those? What is kanji? Kanji is imported from China uh, about 3,000 years ago, and Japanese people use it couple here are gonna get together and then describe in kanji. Kanji looks really art, some people might say artsy, it's really pretty um, letters and some of them are complicated than the other. How many do you need to know? If you know around 2,000 of them, then um, you probably can read most of the news articles and you can read advertisement and all of that kind of stuff. It might seem a lot when you hear 2,000, but you learn the hiragana, katakana, and then if you learn kanji, then it's not too bad because you already know the words that how that described in kanji. So you might be thinking, I don't want to learn 2,000 of them. Can I just learn hiragana and learn old Japanese? And I'll go, you probably don't want to do that. Why? Because if you only know hiragana and if you write all the sentences in hiragana, then it will be really hard to distinguish between particles and noun and adjectives and verb and it will look really hard to read. So after you start learning kanji, um, you probably want to prefer using kanji for a lot of a noun or verb so the sentences looks a lot easier to read. So alphabet, probably hiragana is where you're gonna start. Hiragana is where you're gonna start, but you probably want to learn the kanji so that the sentence will look easier to read. So what is hiragana then? Hiragana is came from kanji and they are 46 of them and it's described in noun, adjective, verb, and they have a particle. What is particle? Particle is a connection letter, one letter that connects a subject, you know, object, and all those noun and adjective that have one letter in connecting all those words. Um, so if you see one letter called particles, and that's just one letter. So uh, you probably might be thinking, what is katakana then? So katakana is, is also a came from a kanji and mostly used to describe foreign words. Why do I say mostly? So generally speaking, right? So koppu, cups or um, lights, laito, uh, those words are described in katakana but they are some of the words that made up Japanese foreign word sounds. We call it wase ego. Wase ego is a made up Japanese words that sounds like foreign words that describe in katakana. It's really interesting if you get to learn them. But for instance, skinship is one of the popular wase ego, skin and ship, skinship. And then you go, what is skinship, right? So skinship is actually the made up Japanese word that some people actually don't know that it's a made up Japanese word. Um, it's a body contact. Like for instance, like in Japan, people don't hug each other for a greeting, right? So um, body, body tachi is kind of like communication, physical body contact with one another. So. Skinship is the way to describe that, the body, physical touch, but it's also emotional connections that people have with each other. Uh, so it's nothing, it's nothing like weird meaning or anything like that. It's just the physical contact that people have with one another. Um, skinship, but uh, Japanese word that sounds like English letters together. So that's when you might come across those foreign sound word with a katakana that is actually, it's just only exists in Japan. And some people don't know that those are um, exist in Japan also. So I don't think you need to worry about that too much. Okay, so start with the hiragana and then also learn the phrase with it too. 
So pronunciation wise, phonetics. Um, so what I do in my class usually is that phonetics, we go over the um, some of the nouns like vocabs, and then we also go over the hiragana alphabet together. So we are not only focusing on hiragana, but also focusing on pronunciation and some of the vocab so that, you know, like it gets really frustrating if you just start with the letters because you don't have any meanings with those alphabet letters, right? So you, what you want to do is you want to put the hiragana with the meaningful like vocab so that it will be easier for you to remember, right? And so learning any language, attaining any skills in general, I think, um, not just language, but in order for you to learn any skill, there are three steps that you should go through, which is, it's kind of like riding bicycle, right? So first, you need to have a bicycle itself. So you have to have all that information. So YouTube or Instagram or any, or classroom itself, what you gaining is the information. It's kind of like buying a bicycle itself, right? You have all the tools that are given to you. Step two is a practice riding the bicycle together. Uh, so it's kind of like you have a, someone pushing the bicycle, the back of your bicycle. So it will be, it's, it's, you cannot stand or ride it by yourself, but you have someone that's supporting you to ride the bicycle. So in, if it's a class or any sort of skill, then you are practicing that skill with a person that is professional or someone that knows more about that. You know, for instance, like if you are in my class, you are practicing saying the phrases, you are practicing um, creating the sentence together. So you have to have those um, practice phase where you do it together with someone that you are reliable, like you're relying on, right? And then step three, presentation uh, steps, which is you are, you can do it by yourself, like riding bicycle without anyone helping you. So you have to have that phase where you can present anything by yourself. Um, so for instance, it's like a presentational, it's like assessment, right? You are taking tests or if you are um, presenting a uh, presentation on like three minutes on speaking certain things, or if you are in my class, like you probably, I don't know, like saying phrases to me, or if you are writing, taking quiz or tests or something like that. So those are the three steps you have to go through in order for you to master or um, attain something, right? So it could be for any, like for a language, um, those are the steps that loop that you're gonna go over and over and over. Each concept, each theme, you go over and over and over on those loop that you have three steps, okay? So anyhow, if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe on the bottom and I hope I will see you on next video. Sayonara!